I wouldn't have made it here if it wasn't by the grace of God. I just want to give him a round of applause because without him, I'm telling you, I would have not have made it this far. Say hi, everybody. Hi. Hey. I am 37 weeks and four days. Isn't that amazing? Listen, first and foremost, I want to thank God. God is so good. We started off with an epic scare at 20 weeks. Fourth pregnancy, never had this happen before, and I needed to get an emergency cerclage. I will post that video down below so that you can see what that was all about. I ended up having to go to the hospital and spend 30 plus days there because of the cerclage. And we weren't sure if we were gonna make it this far, but I told you guys from the beginning, I have faith and by the grace of God, he answered prayers and I am here almost 38 weeks later. So I just want to encourage any girls out there, any women who are going through these issues. And I just want you guys to know that if you have faith, be encouraged, you can make it too. So this video is to let you guys know how I made it personally to 37 weeks and four days with a cerclage. So stay tuned. Okay, and I just want to give a quick disclaimer before I go any further. In no way, shape, or form am I saying that I am a medical expert. I do not give medical advice. This is just how I made it personally, and I want to share my experience with you all. So the next thing I wanted to address is being hydrated. Drink lots and lots of water. When I went in to get my cerclage and stayed in the hospital for two weeks, they gave me that big old jug. They refilled it like every, anytime it was empty, like, hey, do you need more water? Do you need more water? Drink lots of water. And I believe it works because when you're dehydrated, your body can contract and cramp up. And when you're cramping up and contracting, you can get that baby out. So, drink lots and lots of water you will feel so much better you'll feel hydrated yes you're gonna pee a lot but you're gonna pee a lot anyways when you're pregnant so you'd, you'd rather want to stay hydrated and i believe that really did help me because anytime i did start to feel crampy i grabbed my water and started chunking down the water and changing positions and i felt much better afterwards also, elevate your feet. When I was at home on bed rest, I would prop up pillows in the bed. I still do now, but it's more for comfort. But anytime I felt a lot of pressure on my cervix, I would try to elevate my body so that the gravity from the baby was more upwards versus going down towards where the cervix area is and the cerclage. I didn't want any pressure going down there because once I started to feel that pain and pressure, that's when my body would start to feel a little crampier and cramping leads to contractions. So we want to avoid all of that. There's another thing that worked for me when I was in the hospital and I felt that pressure down there from moving around a little, I would just recline the bed all the way back and recline my legs all the way up and just sit and chill and let that baby move back up away from the cervix 
so that there's no pressure down there causing me to contract or causing anything to open up for the baby to come out. So also, rest, rest, rest. I know we as women can stay super busy, especially when you're mom of more than one child at home. Trust me, I get it. I have three little ones that I take care of on a daily basis and it can be hard. But once you start to feel any type of pressure or any type of discomfort, lay your butt down and forget about everything else. And I looked at the point to where I was hospital bedridden as a blessing. At first I was upset, I have to be away from the kids. I have to be away from all my responsibilities, but it helped me be able to focus on just resting, focusing on me, staying hydrated, staying well fed, and, you know, just focusing on growing a baby. So if you can afford to get help, use all the help you need from home because it is hard. I ended up being bedridden in the hospital because my doctor just didn't trust me being home with the three kids full time because I would be tempted to move around. And you know what? They were right. All right. So in addition to keeping hydrated, make sure you empty that bladder. Mm. Because when you have a full bladder, that leads to what? Contractions. So you don't want to cramp up with a full bladder. So make sure you're near a bathroom at all times. If not, you will start to cramp and cramping leads to contractions. So always pee right as you get the chance. Don't hold it. So another thing that I did was Kegel exercises. I didn't do it all the time. I admit I'm bad at it, but anytime I did, like maybe after I sat on the toilet to go pee, I would try to do a Kegel here or there, or if I was sitting in the bed, I would try to do Kegels, and that helped. More than likely, if your doctor prescribes, what? (laughs) If your doctor prescribes, medication for your cervix. Take that every day. I'm saying, I'm talking every day. If you miss it or forget, take it as soon as you forget. So I was prescribed progesterone and what that's supposed to do is to keep your cervix lining thick. So that I took religiously every night before bedtime, you insert it as a suppository, and that is what worked for me. Now I can say, from reading up information and from seeing how long it took for that progesterone to kick in, to keep my cervix a good thickness or length, I decided to stop taking it at about 34 weeks. If I knew what I knew now, I would have stopped by 30 weeks. But you know what? Help me get all the way up to here so I'm not complaining. Do this at your discretion though. I did not talk to my doctor about this. I just did it on my own, but that's another story. But while you are in that danger zone, take that medication every night. More than anything, Listen to your doctor's advice as much as possible, as much as you can. I had two best friends. One was my belly belt band thingy, and the second was those drivable carts in the store. I'll insert a clip right here. of me driving around (laughs) in the car at at Target. But anytime I saw one of those, I hopped on them. And then let me show you how I get on this belly band thing. Okay, so I currently stored the belly wrap thingy in my bathroom. So let me get that free. So 
So I'm missing a strap, but it's not necessary. And sorry, I have this all bungled up here, but I'll insert a clip of how this comes in the package. I got this one from Amazon. It's called the Neotech belly band wrap thing. And what this does is it supports the baby in your belly. So it's not putting so much strain on your back and your pelvic area. So I'm gonna show you how I put it on. So first you're gonna put on this part and it's complicated at first. It looks complicated, but it's really not. Everything is just Velcro. So I don't even know. Um, okay, so first thing you wanna do let me make sure you can see me, is wrap this part around the bottom of your belly. So, now pull this around here, and we're gonna Velcro this side to the top where we can have it as secure as possible around. You wanna make it snug, but not too tight. Some women do this under their clothes, some women do it over, I, it varies for me depending on what I'm wearing for the day, but you strap that around the bottom and already I feel like some pressure is off my cervix and my back. Then you're going to take this one. Now here it shows you what side goes up. Um, I don't know if you can see that up button. Thingy. Let me focus. See, it says up. So, with that, with this, you want to wrap it around your back again. And then these two Velcro straps on the ends are going to strap around here. And you want to do it as snug as possible, but not too tight so that you're uncomfortable. But you find a comfortable area where it's not tight, but you feel that grip and support. And then the last piece I'm missing is just an extra strap that you would, it's like a string you strap on here and then you wrap it around your belly and strap it onto the other side. This is pretty much how it looks. You don't need that other part, like I said, but you get that support for your back and for your belly and all the pressure is off of down here can we just admire how this child is so savvy with making herself a comfortable area with her snacks and everything she is too much just hanging out here with her little tray she's got her bunny she's got her charger she's got her snack and she is enjoying her show. So the last thing I wanted to mention, and this, Cameron, where are the chips on the floor? Chips. This might be contradicting, but walk around whenever you can. I say this because what? Okay. I say this because you could get varicose veins. You could get a lot of pressure and buildup in your legs. So while I was in the hospital on bed rest, they gave me this machine thingy where you strap these compression socks to your feet because you can't get a blood clot from laying down all the time. What? Oh, you can get a blood clot from not laying down and that is life or death. So I was not comfortable with those things on my legs. I don't like compression socks. 
so whenever I felt like a, I had a burst of energy, I would move around, clean my little hospital area. I do the same thing here at the house. I'd get a little burst of energy, clean, clean up, do what I can. And the most important thing that I did to counteract that was as soon as I felt any pressure, I would lay down. I would lay down. So, yeah, move around as much as you can, but with discretion. Today, for the first time, I had my doctor's appointment this morning, and when I walked in, I was like, wait a minute, I'm not as out of breath. I'm not breathing so hard. My baby dropped, guys, so... When I did the ultrasound, she was like way down there. Like the ultrasound tech literally had the probe like down in my vag and she was like, wow, your baby is a really low. So that is a good sign. That means she is coming soon. So yeah, that's an update. Baby dropped, still here at 37 weeks, made it to full term check. Let's do part two and have a baby and check that off the list. But anyways, I hope this video was informative for you guys. Again, not a medical professional. Take my experience with discretion and use it to the best that you can. Everyone is different, but this is my experience. This is how I made it to 37 weeks. It's not technically full term yet, but it's called early term. So the good news is we're at term and we're in that window where baby can come any day and she is healthy and as active as ever and we're just praying for a successful delivery a quick and painless less painful delivery a little pain as possible i'm gonna try to do it without an epidural but we'll see anyways i'll catch you guys later take care